I believe that the kidnap of these girls will be the beginning of end of terror in Nigeria. That was Nigerian President. Good luck, Jonathan. Um, he was also pleading for assistance from uh, global and regional powers. Uh, he says there is an illicit flow of weapons across the Nigerian border. That's part of the problem. And he says it's still unknown how the girls were kidnapped. Well, still three weeks and more than 200 girls kidnapped and nowhere to be seen. Islamist militants in Nigeria. Well, where are they? The trail has gone cold. WSJ's Drew Hinshaw has been covering the story and joins us now on the phone from Abuja. Drew, thank you for being there. This is a, a story that stands thank out you. for awf awfulness in every way. The trail's gone cold. Um, how is the government in Nigeria and all the, the powers that are giving aid, how are they actually managing to track this down? That's a really good question. I mean, the, the, the fact of the matter is you're not talking about, you're now talking about a, a a large countryside that is controlled by a group that is just so much better uh, equipped than the Nigerian uh, army. Um, so what we're getting right now is a lot of assistance coming in to help find these girls, to help uh, use satellite images, and to help advise Nigerian troops about how to potentially rescue them. But at the end of the day, Nigerian soldiers are going to have to be willing to go up against uh, some of the most fierce and, and well-armed uh, insurgents in Africa. Now, a lot of Western countries with some, some very, very well-trained uh, special forces have offered assistance. I'm, I'm thinking the, the U.S. and the U.K. The U.K. Um, has the SAS at its disposal. Um, do you, th the first job, though, is to find these girls. And my understanding is that they could have been dispersed uh, across a vast area. It could be in other countries even. So how does, how does one track this down? Sure. The simple fact is that no one really knows uh, if they're still together, if they've been dispersed. Uh, we talked to one uh, source today who said that uh, villagers had reported a large vision of, of, uh, of young women in the past few weeks, but there are also a lot of false leads in this case. You hear a lot about them being moved into Cameroon, you hear a lot about them being separated, and the simple fact of the matter is we just don't know. Uh, the, the Nigerian troops have lost control of an enormous amount of territory in that region, and uh, without them regaining that territory, it's hard to imagine how... Uh, they're going to find 223 girls unless they're all sitting in one place waiting to be uh, spotted from the drone. Now, now, Drew, you've been talking with some of the families and they've been getting rather frustrated, haven't they? Yeah, they're enormously frustrated. I mean, frustrated. They might have been frustrated in the first, the second, and third week. Uh, now we're coming on near four, four, four weeks, and uh, frustration doesn't really even like encapsulate the with the kind of horror, the, the deadening feeling that they're, they're describing. Uh, they, they've only seen a smattering of government officials. Uh, it took the police two or three weeks to decide that they were going to do their own investigation to just determine the number of girls who were kidnapped, let alone their names. And uh, as of Thursday, none of the villagers we spoke to had seen a single police officer in the entire time that these girls were been missing. Okay, and we have to leave it there. Stay safe, Drew Hinshaw, and we hope those girls are quickly returned.